my name is Lynn and welcome or welcome back to my channel Nourish Your Crown where we share information resources and encouragement to support you on your hair journey. After being diagnosed with CCCA and early scarring alopecia I decided that I wanted to take a holistic approach to treatment which includes nutrition, supplementation, movement, self-care, and on occasion medication. It's an up and down journey so I'm sharing everything that I'm learning and hope that it encourages you too. If you're looking for this type of content, please hit the like and subscribe button and also feel free to share it with your friends and family members who might also be on the same journey. So let's get started. Oh, also save the date because on April 1st, 2023, we're going to do a live chat. I'll put the information in the description box or in the community post. That way um, you can just use that link to join us. We're going to meet on April 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And just to say hello, share what we're learning, share our stories, and just to connect. So hope, hopefully you can join us there. Let's talk about hidden inflammation. So one of the things that I found out pretty early on after doing my own research and listening to my dermatologist that inflammation or excess inflammation um, internally and on the scalp was contributing to my issue with CCCA and early scarring alopecia. We determined that the goal is going to be to reduce excess inflammation. Remember, I'm not a physician, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a hairstylist. Uh, I'm just a middle-aged woman on a journey of dealing with chronic hair loss, asking God for wisdom and sharing what I'm learning and I hope that it encourages you too. So this is one of the best descriptions that I found about inflammation. I'm just actually gonna post it up here. So when your body encounters an offending agent, like a virus or a bacteria, or suffers an injury, it activates our immune system. And our immune system sends out first responders, um, which are inflammatory cells and cytokines. Um, and keep that in mind, because we're gonna talk about cytokines coming up. And so a normal part of the body's response is an inflammatory response to injury or infection. So it's normal to have some levels of inflammation in our body. But when it goes into excess is when we have the problem. And that's when we start having chronic issues with a whole host of issues. In fact, Dr. Mark Hyman, he goes as far to say that most of the chronic illnesses that our society is dealing with, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, cancer, hair loss, a lot of these chronic conditions um, are associated and connected to excess, excess inflammation in the body. And our goal is to get our bodies back into balance. These are some of the hidden causes. Some of them may not be so hidden because if you've been on this journey for a while, you've, you've learned some of this already. But for those of you who are new, these are some of the hidden causes of inflammation that might be impacting our hair journeys. So you might be familiar, like I said, you might be familiar with some of them, but if you are, I'm going to ask, I'll ask you what I ask myself. How am I addressing them? How am I approaching these issues? Am I on track or is there something that I could do differently? So let's get started. Chronic stress, number one. So you've, if you've seen the other videos, I'll post it here. Prolonged stress can trigger excess inflammation in the body. And it does that because it increases the release of the stress hormone cortisol. And cortisol is actually the thing that triggers the inflammation in the body. Um, a study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that individuals who reported chronic stress had higher levels of inflammatory markers. Um, and the blood test that they used is called C-reactive protein and then there is another inflammatory marker called interleukin-6, um, and they had those markers in their blood. And y'all know, if you've been here before, you know I have notes. So I'm gonna be looking at the notes to make sure that I get the information right. So chronic stress is, it's no secret that it is a cause of inflammation or excess inflammation in the body. I'm really interested to hear how do you manage stress? How do you, um, because it's coming at us all over the place, right? Whether it's work or home or issues or financial or kids or parents, like it's a lot of places. And so it's gonna be important for us to think about how we manage stress and how we deal with what se seems like sometimes chronic stress, like it just doesn't stop. And so we already know that that is, it could be a significant factor contributing to hair loss. So the next hidden area, 
is again, no secret if you've been here before, but poor sleep. So sleep is essential for the body to repair, to regenerate. Um, a lack of sleep can lead to inflammation and immune system dysfunction. So there was a study pu published in the journal Brain Behavior and Immunity found that sleep deprivation led to increased production of inflammatory cytokines, which we talked about just a few minutes ago. So it's important for us to think about our quality of sleep, getting sleep. The thing that's kind of hard is depending upon where you are, like a lot of the women on this video are either perimenopausal or menopausal. And so we are already, many of us, dealing with sleep issues, which can also be kind of frustrating. Um, but there are certainly things that we can do to help encourage a good night's sleep. And so again, I'll link to that video. There's some tips in there. But then also one of the things that I that I started to do recently, pretty recently, like I've talked before in the videos about the things that I take to help, the natural things that I take to help with sleep. But I was reading a book by Cole Arthur Riley and she has a section in the book about rest. And I'm gonna paraphrase her statement and I'm gonna share with you sort of a quick prayer that I've been saying in this one version or another, but she in her book talks about how, and this is actually science-based as science-backed as well, is that when we sleep, our body goes into repair and regeneration mode. Um, and so listen, reading her in her book and then some of the research that I found and then just thinking about like when I go to sleep, this is a kind of a little a bit of a prayer that I've been saying. Um, and I, I, I say it in different ways. This is not the only way, but I thought I'd share it with you, right? So, oh, the Lord, thank you for the gift of sleep and regeneration. Thank you that you created my cells to begin the sacred rhythm of repair and release during sleep. And that when I wake up, I will be more healed, more whole and less inflamed and more aware. And I thank you in Jesus name. And I say, and amen. So that's a quick little prayer that I say. And just to help my body align with the way that it's supposed to be right um so anyway that, that's just something something that i wanted to share that's just something that, that's just something that i wanted to share with y'all so um next up another hidden area or a hidden factor with excess inflammation is called gut dysbiosis and this is an imbalance of the gut bacteria that can lead to chronic inflammation um, as the gut microbiome, as the gut microbiome plays a really important part in regulating our immune system, like everything is connected. Um, and so, a study published in the journal the journal Nature found that changes in our gut microbiota in gut microbiota composition were associated with increased levels of inflammatory markers in the blood. So, it's really important for us to make sure that we have healthy gut health, because again, it's tied to our immune function, which is tied to inflammation, which is tied to the other areas that we're talking about. And the next area is chronic infections. So persistent infections, such as Lyme disease um, and other viral inf infections can trigger ongoing inflammation in the body. And so the more that our body, again, is going, is having to be in that fight mode, it's going to increase the inflammation. It's going to increase the inflammatory markers. I think I mentioned in another video, you know, COVID-19, they found COVID-19 in people who had COVID-19 and were, that had a symptom of hair loss. There was a physician that indicated that they found the COVID-19 in the hair follicles, right? So chronic infections can certainly also increase inflammation in our bodies. Speaking of chronic inflammation, and this one I learned about maybe about a year or so ago, but when I read about this, I was like, this makes perfect sense. I don't know why I didn't think about this. But another area of hidden inflammation is our oral health, right? So gingivitis, which is uh, inflammation on the gum line and periodontitis, but periodontitis is when the gingivitis has essentially escalated. And so it causes bone issues and root issues. It's actually, there's some science out there that says that people who have these types of gum issues are at risk for alopecia areata. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this on the screen and read it exactly, share it exactly the way that it's written, because this is from Dr. Anthony Farrell. 
And essentially, they're basically saying that when the tooth is infected, the white blood cells work overtime to destroy the infection. The white blood cells may migrate to nearby cells, such as those found in hair follicles. And so alopecia areata may occur if the white blood cells mistakenly attack the hair follicles, weakening them to such a degree that hair growth is no longer possible. So it's important for us to be mindful of our oral health, right? Keep those appointments, make those appointments, do what you have to do. I'm in the process right now of getting quite a bit of dental work done. And so um, I definitely recommend, if you haven't looked at that as an area and you're dealing with inflammation, excess inflammation, this is just another, another way to think about, hmm, could this be contributing? The next up is toxins. And so environmental toxins and being exposed to environmental toxins um, like pollutants and chemicals can trigger inflammation in the body. And this is kind of like a, I feel like this is a no brainer, but I rem so growing up, we used to always, and I still actually use bleach, but we use Clorox a lot, right? But I don't ever recall growing up having the symptoms that I have now when I use it. So now when I use Clorox, I know I probably shouldn't use it because it's Clorox, it's a toxin, a bleach, but I love the smell. <laughs> Y'all, I just feels like the house is cleaner when I use it. But anyway, so the Clorox, when I use it, literally I get my nose gets stuffy, my, the back of my throat starts itching, which, which is my body telling me, look, we're, try, we're fighting this stuff. You, don't, you shouldn't be cleaning with this. I'm working on it, but that's just a quick example. But there are other toxins that we are exposed to involuntarily and sometimes voluntarily that we may not even be aware of. So be mindful of what we're exposing ourselves to because again, toxins trigger excess inflammation in the body. The next area was one that was pretty obvious to me early on in this journey was food sensitivities and intolerances. Like I think I said in one of the earlier videos, I knew I was lactose intolerant, but I kept taking and drinking and eating things that had um, milk in them, which in turn caused gut issues, which in turn, you know, impacts the inflammation. And so I, I finally, I'm I'm probably, I think I'm 100%, I've been 100% dairy free for a while, but certain foods like gluten or dairy can cause inflammation in individuals who are sensitive or intolerant to them. And so food sensitivities are more common than food allergies um, and they can cause actually delayed symptoms. So a food allergy from what I've read is like, it's something you take it and there's like an immediate response to your body, right? But food sensitivities are typically not life-threatening and they take, um, if left untreated, they can actually cause inflammation in the gut. So do you all have any food sensitivities that you're aware of or did you have some and you eliminated them? Would love to hear that. So leave a comment below there. Um, and then also when you, so this is a separate one, but so when you had to eliminate your food sensitivities or intolerances, what was that experience like? Because I'll tell you, at first I was um, just eager to get some symptom relief, but then it quickly morphed to, I can't have this, I can't have this, I can't have this. And, and I've been on a journey of just being grateful for what I can have. But how do y'all deal with food sensitivities and intolerances, right? Oh, and so, so that's it. Those are some hidden quick tips on some hidden areas that could uh, be causing some excess inflammation, um, stress, lack of sleep, gut issues, toxins, dental issues that may need to be treated, food intolerances, and chronic infections. So next up, I'm actually gonna talk about some free strategies and some low cost strategies that we can use to reduce some excess inflammation. Um, and always, as always, check with your doctor, check with your nutritionist, check with your hairstylist as you're on this journey to health. Live well, live blessed, nourish your crown. I'll see you in the next video.